Michael Nagy here with Jiggy Jag TV and DiscoveringBands.com. And for everyone watching, if you can share this video on my channel and help support the awesome bands I feature. And today I'm here with Mark Massive from Massive Ego. How are you doing today? How you doing, Michael? I'm good. Thank Great you very much. Now, uh, how did uh, Massive Ego become such a well-known band in the scene? Hmm. Are we that well-known, really? Um, I, I don't know. Um, it seems to have happened very quickly. Uh, I mean, we've been with Out of Line for, I think, about five years now. Um, and I think since we've joined that label, I think things have kind of really turned around for us because before that, I mean, we, I, we formed in 1996. So we've been going about 24 years now. Um, but it is only the last five years that kind of things have really taken off and things have started happening. So um, whether we're kind of really well known, I don't know. Maybe because of the single with Blue Tangle, maybe that changes things. I don't know. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's a good scene to be on. Yeah, well, I've been going to goth clubs for a long time in the U.S. and they play your songs and hits all the time. So that's why I said that. Okay. Yeah, because the earlier stuff we used to do, we used to do a lot of kind of cover versions, sort of dance cover versions, a little bit techno trancey, a um, little bit of high energy thrown in. Uh, but of course, the, the scene that we're on now, obviously a lot of people are kind of rediscovering those old things that we used to do because because of the beauty of Spotify and YouTube. Um, but it was a very different scene that we were on then to what we're on now. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Now, tell us about the uh, new single you just did with Blue Tango. How did that come to be? Oh, God, I'm, I'm so thrilled. Um, I think as of now, we've just gone over the 20,000 views on the video, which launched on Friday. So I'm really happy with that, uh, beyond expectations. Um, and the feedback has been fantastic. Again, I, I wasn't sure how Blue Tango fans would take it because they're quite a hardcore bunch. And of course, us suddenly coming on to, I mean, we've worked with Blue Tangle before. You know, we've toured with them. We've, we've been support for their tours. We've done tracks together. We've done remixes for them. But of course, this is the first time that the two have come together as one. Um, and I really didn't know how the fans would take it because they're very hardcore. They like, they like their Blue Tangle, you know, and they don't like any, anyone messing with that formula. Um, but obviously getting to work with Chris was great. Um, it's lovely to be able to write words for him to sing as well, which was a really nice part of being involved with him, part of the single. So I've enjoyed it. It's been really good. And what do you think uh, makes you and Chris connect so well together? I would say probably we're, we're both 80s kids. Uh, we're around about the same age. I'm a little bit older, a couple of years older than him. Um, just grew up, I think, with the same interest in the same music at the same time um, we both like kind of dark things um, and even though there's like a language barrier because i don't speak any german i try when, when we do shows in germany i can literally say good evening wherever we are uh, and i can say the odd little line in between um, but i don't speak german but obviously chris speaks really good english um, and i think that's kind of helped along the way um, I don't know, we just seemed to get on, we clicked. I think from the first time we kind of saw each other, uh, we arrived at, um, there's like an out of line party, and we just signed to the label and we were invited. So we flew over and it was in Berlin. Um, and I remember just seeing Chris in the, in the background in the corner and he came over and he was instantly so welcoming and we were like really nervous, obviously. Um, just, yeah, he's very welcoming, really easy to get on with. I think that's why we get on, so. Yeah, and the new single, it seems like it's been very successful already. Have you got, and Chris talked about maybe doing another collaboration together or song together in the future? Um, I, I think kind of Chris is really, he's, obviously there's going to be a new Blue Tangle album next year, so it's full on with that. Uh, we've got to write a new EP or something, so we're busy writing as well. Who knows, maybe in the future. Um, I don't want to kind of milk it too much, do you know what I mean? Because we've, we've done some nice work together. For the fans, we can't keep just working together, I don't think. So, who knows? Let, never say never. And now for Massive Ego, uh, your recent music has taken more of a darker turn. Do you think you'll continue that uh, style, that darker sound? Um, yes, uh, I, I think so, yes. Um, I mean, I think the last album, um, Church of the Malfunctioned, that kind of got really dark. Um, it went dark as well because I just lost my mum at the time. 
I just started writing the album. I lost my mum, so obviously that reflected very heavily on the kind of subject matter and what I was writing about. Um, I think the first album we did with Out of Line, it was a little bit more cheerful. It was kind of 80s synth pop style. Um, whether the subject matter for the new material will be as dark, I don't know yet because I'm kind of, I don't know, I don't want to keep writing about sad and dark things, you know. I kind of, I know we're just coming out of like a, well, we're in the middle of a really awkward time at the minute, what with COVID, uh, the UK's got the whole Brexit thing going on. It's kind of really shit, you know? So, um, I don't know, maybe the next Massive Ego EP should be a little bit more happy. We will see. Let's see what I'll come up with. Awesome. Now, your makeup, uh, how long does that take? And uh, what does that kind of symbolize? Well, I rushed it tonight. I've got to be honest. It's not quite on point as it can be sometimes. Uh, rushed it tonight, did it in about two hours. I normally like about three hours. So when we're backstage before a gig, if I can get three hours to do makeup, I'm really happy. And it kind of sets me off for a good gig. If I've had three hours in makeup, I feel okay. So, but yeah. Now, do you change the makeup up a little bit or keep it basically the same? Um, I've kind of kept it very similar for a long time. Um, it's the same, I think, with the, the hairstyle and everything. I think people kind of know this look. Um, you know, makeup wise, if I do it myself, I kind of stick to what I know because I'm not a makeup artist. It, you know, there's so many better people out there that do makeup and I'm, I'm not great. So I stick with what I know. It obviously always ends up looking a bit kind of panda eyes. I quite like mm -hmm. the panda look. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And I want to ask, how have you handled the whole quarantine and lockdown time? Oh, God, well, I mean, it's kind of, for me, I've got to be honest, it's not that unusual. I mean, I, I don't go out a huge lot anyway. I'm quite reclusive naturally. Um, you know, uh, it hasn't really affected me personally hugely. I think for the country and for the world, it's it's a disaster. You know, everything's just going to put and it's, it's just not great. But I don't know, it, there's things are looking up, I think, you know, there's all these vaccine talks of vaccines that are going to work, they're going to be released in, in a matter of weeks, let's see what happens. Um, but for me personally, it hasn't been a problem. I quite like being indoors. Um, yeah, I'm quite antisocial at the best of times. And when touring is able again, do you think you'll ever come back to the US again? Because I think it's been a while since you've been to the US. We've right? never been to America, never really? been to America. No, I've, I've had lots of trips there, you know, just for myself. I've been to I love New York. Um, but as far as being there with the band, we've never played America. Um, and it's, I don't know, it's looking harder and harder to play. You know, the whole visa situation and would we meet the criteria for being allowed in? I don't know. I mean, I've seen much bigger bands on the scene who've, announce tours and then they've not been able to go to America because of the visa situation. So unless things ease up, maybe with your new pre uh, president, I don't know, maybe things will ease up. If it does, then we'll be straight over because it's a, it's a fantastic country. Um, and I'd love to do some shows in, in New York or wherever. I don't know, is there a dark scene in New York? I don't think there is. Oh, really. yeah. There's a big scene. We have multiple club nights and events weekly in New York, Philadelphia, all over the states. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, love to come. But let's hope things change a bit and it's easier for us to get over there, you know? Yeah, it's interesting you say that because I didn't think you played the U.S., but I looked online just to see if you'd ever been here and it showed that you had shows scheduled like 10 years ago. That's interesting. Ah, oh, no, no. This is interesting. Um, that... About 10 years ago, a band appeared on the scene called Massive Ego. We'd already been going about 10 years um, and they were an American band and they called themselves Massive Ego. And at the time I was like, I can't, you know, I couldn't believe it. I was like, they can't do this, we have, you know. So I kind of contacted them and I emailed their label and they'd only just started. And when they got the email from me, they kind of changed their name. Um, so I think what you're seeing is in the history is that there was a band from America called Massive Ego, um, but they only lasted a few weeks. Oh, that's interesting. They had shows and things, but they, it quickly disappeared because I sent an email that was quite stroppy. So, um, yeah. 
And uh, when the touring is loud again, do you have any plans maybe next year for some shows or festivals? Um, yes. I mean, everything that we had planned for this year has literally just been pushed to next year. So for us, the shows are meant to start in May uh, with lots of things. In We're doing Germany a lot. We're going to do Poland for the first time. Uh, we're doing Helsinki, which we've never done before. But you know what? It's all fingers crossed. It's like nobody knows. We don't know, you know. So I'm going to be positive, and I'm, I'm looking forward to next May when we start back out on the road and we can do some festivals and some shows again. I mean, it's funny because the start of 2020 started so good. We, You know, we were on tour with Ashby Heights uh, doing the Persistent Illusions tour. That was our first proper tour with you know of our own uh, it was like a joint headline with ashby heights and we did six dates in january and february and i thought this is great the year is starting fantastic and then of course what happened march hit and the whole thing went wrong you know so we were grounded um but yeah i mean again with that tour we were meant to do a second part to that so i'd like to think next year we can do another second part to the tour with with ashby heights so fingers crossed let's see what happens yeah it's great that you're staying motivated and focused especially releasing a new single michael i'm very positive very focused it's going to be okay next year you just got to believe well said so um when do you think you're uh, be, uh coming out with now maybe next year or the year after or when when would you uh, think well we're, we're right we've started writing um not a fast process, but I think what we're aiming for is like an EP with maybe four or five tracks on it. So that's what we're aiming towards. Um, yeah, it's it's possible. I definitely want to release something next year. So awesome! I know you just did this song with Blue Tangle. Do you have any other artists you might want to collaborate with in the future? Um, ooh, off the top of my head, um, I can't think of any off the top of my head at the minute. Um, there's lots of people I love, but um, I think we need to just kind of, I think after doing a kind of a duet track, it's always good to kind of get back into what you, you do as a group, you know, and, and put your own thing out there so that people kind of think, okay, I don't want to be known as just kind of like a collaborator or whatever. I want people to, to go back and listen to the Massive Ego track. So um, yeah, maybe in the future, I think. Awesome. Now, if people want to find you online, look you up, get your music on social media, how do they do that? Uh, well, we're everywhere. Um, we're quite, it's very hard to miss us. So, um, yeah, we're on Facebook. Um, we're on Twitter. Uh, we're on Instagram. Uh, obviously, we have our website, massiveego.co.uk. Um, but all of the other places I mentioned, we're on there. So just put in a search, Massivego, and you'll find us. Yeah. Awesome. I want to ask, how did the name Massive Ego come to be? I actually hate the name now. I absolutely hate the band's name. Um, it was all, it was originally, it was meant to be a bit of a piss take. It was meant to be funny and ironic. Um, never did I think in my wildest dreams that like 24 years later, I'd still be going out doing shows under that name. Um, had I known that, I think I would have chose a really much better name because I don't know. I just I, it's very awkward because obviously I think people think instantly, oh, you must be full of it. You must have a massive ego. You must be full of yourself. And I think my friends and people that really know me know that I'm absolutely the polar opposite to that because I'm, you know, I suffer from panic attacks. I have anxiety issues. I always have done all of my life. So that's why I called it what I called it because it was meant to be like role reversal. And I thought if I called it that, it was almost like um, like a security blanket against the panic attacks and anxiety that I felt. So, you know, because I didn't feel like I had a massive ego. But if you call yourself that, people believe it, I guess. Um, but like I say, now, 24 years later, it's kind of backfired a bit because we're now doing nice big shows and people are like, people that don't know us or whatever, they might just think, oh. But I just think if people get to, you know, listen to interviews and read things that we've written and stuff, they might realize that I'm not full of it because I'm not. <laughs> I'm a quivering mess most of the time, Michael. Yeah, you've been really nice to talk to this whole time. Thank you. <laughs> and I want to ask, are you involved in any side projects? Because I know a lot of artists do other different projects and stuff too. Um, 
I've got a couple of little things I've been asked to do, um, and I'm kind of working towards those. Um, but like I said, obviously the priority has to be Massive Ego. Um, but there are a couple of little things that might appear next year, all being well. So I'd already done a, a little side pro project called Androgyny, um, and that was on a compilation the year before last. But um, I'd like to do some more stuff with the guy that I worked on with that. But there is another little side project. So, yeah, watch this space. Awesome. Now, I know you've been doing Massive Ego for so long. And for the, the true fans of the band, do you have any maybe B-sides or unreleased material out there? Or? Um, not really. I think everything that we, we do, we kind of, it gets released. So there's, there's nothing sitting in a vault or sitting on my shelf, you know, um, undiscovered. It's all out there. So... Because I'm, 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 we're, we're quite sort of slow writers, I don't tend to write prolifically. So pretty much when I write something, that get, that's released and that's it. There, there isn't things sat in the can, you know, undiscovered. So it's all out there. Awesome. Now I want to ask, where would you like to see the uh, band in a few years from now? Um, still going would be good. Um, still able to travel would be nice. Uh, I'd hate to think that because of the, the Brexit thing that we have in this country where we're leaving the, the EU and Europe, I'd hate to think that we become such a small little island and we're not allowed to leave because that would be disastrous. And it's, sadly, that's the way it's looking at the minute because of the people that rule us and the, you know our politicians, they're making a bit of a mess of it. So um, yeah, I'd like to think I can still travel. I'd like to think I can still do shows abroad. That's what I'm aiming for. Um, and yeah, but there are actually, I'm, I'm not going to say what it is, but next year there is a bit of an announcement coming. We've got a bit of a surprise. Uh, slightly something different is going to happen next year. That's all I can say. Look forward to that. Cool. Well, it was good having you and talking with you and everyone looking up. Oh, thank you, Michael. Thanks a lot for having me. No problem. Thank you.